Hey guys and welcome to a game of StarCraft 2. We're watching uh, a Terran player against a Protoss player. Uh, the replay came from GosaGamers.net. Uh, it's Mio Wera as Terran and uh, some Korean Protoss uh, up against him. That Wera clan, uh, spelt W-E-R-R-A, um, has been around for a long time. I actually remember picking up Reign of Chaos about seven or eight years ago now. And uh, when I got online and I checked the ladder for the first time, uh, the guy that was number one uh, was some random player uh, from the Weir clan. So they obviously have been uh, keeping strong. Uh, a few of their players uh, you know, surfaced in the limelight, limelight from time to time during Brood War and obviously during uh, Frozen Throne as well. Uh, Terran starting out with barracks and refinery, just very standard stuff. Um, I do see some builds where the Terran player goes to refinery first if he wants to harass with uh, Reapers. But that's uh, more of an anti-Zerg strategy as far as I've seen. Uh, Protoss player skipping any Zealots uh, to, in order to get the, the quick uh, cybernetics core and get straight into tech. Uh, fully standard stuff. And again, um, up, uh, <coughs> scanner going up straight away. Orbital commanders, the, the phrase is trying to get out of my mouth there. Uh, this map is a Metalopolis. Metalop... Metal something. Uh, <laughs> It's got metal in the name. I'm, I'm all about metal, as you guys know, uh, if, any, if anybody there is familiar with my music. But looks like he's going with a chrono boost on the gateway. Going to try and get some uh, zealots out. I presume that is to uh, make up for the fact that he went for the uh, cybernetic score uh, fairly quickly. Um, usually you're not really in danger of being rushed by marines uh, this early in the game, unless uh, the Terran player really wants to try and commit to something funky involving uh, barracks. But it's quite difficult to do. Uh, Stalker out now. Going to take out the uh, scout. And from now on, the Terran player is going to be in, dark for, in the dark for a while. Now, one thing about uh, StarCraft 2 is, of course, you can use scan sweep energy to see what your opponent's doing, but you really want to avoid that because the Orbital Command is giving you uh, uh, extra bit of macro in the form of those mules being called call down. So you don't really want to use that uh, scan sweep unless you really need to find out what your opponent's doing. Uh, looks like uh, bunkers going up along with uh, reactor on the uh, barracks. Looks like uh, the strategy here for the Terran player is really to uh, make sure he survives this initial push of tier 1 units uh, in terms of harassment here, and that's what uh, the Protoss is doing, uh, in order to either tech up to something or expand very quickly. And I think uh, the Protoss player here will realize that. Uh, seeing a bunker there like that, it means that the Terran player is going light on troops tier 1, going to get something a bit more significant uh, in the short while. Second gateway going around here for Protoss. Um, no, ex no sign of expansion just yet. Really, he doesn't want to expand because he doesn't know whether he's going to be out teched or um, out, out expanded. But once he sees that command center flying over, that's when he'll probably get a nexus of his own. But what we're seeing here is the command center being uh, turned into audible command straight away. I quite like this move because it means he can start calling down uh, mules from it straight away. And uh, the Protoss player doesn't actually know what he's doing. And I think it's quite a smart play there from Terran. Um, not floating it down immediately because he knows that uh, you know, he, he can't quite get rid of all the Protoss troops um, if, if you factor in other reinforcements coming in from the Protoss base. But we did see here um, a expansion going down for the Protoss, which I think is a fairly safe thing to do considering the fact that he's got, he's got stalkers available, he's got uh, two gateways pumping them, and he's seen that investment of the, the bunker. Usually you wouldn't be investing in a bunker and you know several barracks worth of you know, fast pushing marines and stem. Um, unless you're doing something very sneaky, but the feeling solid moves from both sides so far So I'm quite right quite liking the level of play I'm seeing a robotics facility up straight away that can be quite handy for quick observers uh, because uh, Having an observer in your opponent's base Really, uh, they're not going to try and comset it um, too busy for that usually well it can happen But you really need to know what your opponent is doing uh, Starcraft 2 seems to be a, a game of hard counters to be honest if you know exactly what your opponent's unit composition is and, and what he's doing, where he's on the map, you can really stop him. And uh, with Brood War, <coughs> I feel like there were other um, factors involved. Brood War was very uh, timing oriented in a lot of ways. You had to get a lot of position right there. Uh, we had the, we had a lot of talk about mid-game convergence. Uh, won't really go into detail about what that is, but uh, that's something that we saw a lot in StarCraft One. I think it's sort of really being ironed out, you know, where that starts and finishes in StarCraft 2. There's less knowledge about it. The first observer arriving in the Terran base, you'll see here that um, he's going heavy on Marauders with those, all of those reactors. Uh, sorry, not reactors, tech labs. 
Um, so in order to counter that, he's going to need something significant, um, possibly uh, air units, void rays maybe. I doubt it though. Probably what we'll be seeing a lot of is uh, Templars, really. It's, it's a great way to deal with uh, Terran infantry in general. If you're not going mech, um, you're going um, obviously infantry, so uh, really best way to go. And um, just like in, in Brood War, High Templars are very effective units. Uh, I'm not really sure if uh, people are using Hallucination much in StarCraft 2, although I know it uh, got a little bit of a change. Oh, an expansion going down here at the uh, 5 o'clock position. Quite like this because uh, the Terran player has invested so heavily in uh, Marauders 4 now that this is a point of timing in the game where the uh, Terran player has military uh, dominance, just given the fact that he's uh, quickly invested in all those uh, reactors, uh, sorry, tech labs, and uh, probably has researched STEM by now. And this is quite cool. Sending the factory over to scout. As we were talking about earlier, scouting is very important because this is a, this is a game of of, uh, of hard counters. But you don't really want to use your precious uh, comsat energy when you could be calling down mules instead. And uh, here we go with uh, immortals coming up. Immortals pretty good uh, against uh, a lot of Terran units. Very effective unit. They're quite expensive, but uh, well worth it if uh, you've got the right unit composition. And there you see it, Templar archives, as we thought. Um, getting ready, ready for storm straight away, as you can see, it's researching there. And uh, before long, we'll see a lot of uh, Templars, and uh, as a result, a side effect of Templars was the Archons as well. Archons nowadays can be morphed from both uh, High Templars and Dark Templars, uh, which is interesting. Dark, Dark Templars, as I recall it, just from playing the single player campaign anyway, um, require more resources than High Templars, so typically you wouldn't really build Dark Templars just for the. Um, just for the Archons, but then again, if your strategy has uh, involved Dark Templars for whatever reason, uh, of course, you know, if your Dark Templars are wounded and your micro is good enough to keep them um, out of the fight, then you could always uh, salvage salvage them by turning them to, to uh, uh, Archons, as the case may be. Now, um, real economic disadvantage here for the Protoss, hopefully he realizes what's going on and expands uh, soon, or at least uh, makes use of his power to uh, crush the Terran infantry with his storms. Can't really see that happening just yet because he's got to let his uh, high Templar star charge up. Uh, Mio Wera, the Terran player, is uh, pushing out. Now, I think this is a good move. He really needs to test the waters, find out what's going on, but he just needs to avoid storms at this point. Uh, but looking at his army, he must have the upgrades. He's got the Medivacs. Uh, he's getting ready to really do some serious damage here. I'm not too sure if he's got uh, the uh, combat shields just yet, but not, not really needing them. Actually, let's, let's have a closer look. Yeah, I can't really see combat shields um, on the Marines yet, but uh, my uh, the uh, little file that I'm looking at the screen... Oh, yep, no, he has actually researched uh, combat shields. Sorry, my mistake. There we go. And a fourth command center going down. That's quite cool. Up at the uh, 3 o'clock location. Uh, really interesting. He's got ghosts added to his troops. Now, I think ghosts are critical uh, late-game TVP. You really need to be able to EMP the High Templars. And uh, obviously getting uh, the shields off on the mortals really makes a massive difference. And once you start seeing things like Void Rays, Colossus, even Carriers, then EMP is just uh, magical. Uh, nukes a lot easier to uh, get and to deliver in StarCraft 2 as well. So um, really, you can't really uh, go past Ghost. They're fantastic. They're much better at killing things as well now. Um, so, and don't forget, uh, good old snipe, if you uh, catch yourself nearby to some um, High Templars, just get rid of them, don't even bother EMPing them, just snipe them, kill them, and then you're done. And um, sensor tower up there, I love the position of that sensor tower, because that actually is in such a good position, it shows you the uh, Protoss uh, forces coming past the Terran base, uh, where they would naturally attack, and it also shows you any air units coming across that ditch, in between the two bases, but hold that thought, we've got a fight about to erupt now, uh, Marauder's stemming up and getting position. Oh, Storm going off, pulling back. You really need to watch out for that and, and uh, move back as soon as possible to see Storm. It doesn't do so much damage if you do pull back. And man, uh, you know, Terran player losing a number of units just from, from those few hits there. Even though he dodged uh, to his best ability, uh, Command Center now completed. He'll be bringing uh, SVs across here. And not too sure what he'll be uh, doing to protect it. Oh! He is actually going to be uh, turning that into a planetary fortress. Oh, yeah, he's, he's done that at 5 o'clock as well. Really interesting choice there because obviously uh, Orbital Command gives you so much more resources and obviously can, um, Comsat's very useful too if you need it. But um, he wants to keep his economy up and rolling by keeping those expansions alive.